We're going to take a look at this energy observer. Very interesting looking catamaran. I looked it up. It was a race boat from uh, 20 years ago, I think, made in Canada and now turned into an energy research boat looking at alternative fuels and propulsion. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising for over 30 years, currently aboard our variable draft Southerly 480 sailboat in Panama. We're planning to build a new boat and looking into various propulsion systems, including the possibility of an electric drive. We have a short-term uh, storage in the lithium batteries. Oh, I see. Short-term okay. is in lithium, but yes. longer-term you can store the hydrogen that's, that's in the fuel cells. Yes. The Energy Observer is traveling around the world demonstrating the possibilities of hydrogen fuel. The goal is to be 100% energy self-sufficient. They're powering all ship systems, including cooking, navigation, and even powering the electric motors that drive her through the water with electricity. The electricity is collected in her solar panels, which cover every bit of her wide decks. The power is stored in batteries and also in compressed hydrogen. It's the hydrogen that makes her so interesting. Wow. So how big is the, are the lithium batteries? Uh, we have uh, 100 uh, kilowatts. A hundred so it's uh, equivalent to two tons. That's about like one uh, Tesla. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, two tons. Two tons. Two tons. Two tons. Uh, and no, one point five. One point five tons of uh, lithium batteries. And if we if we had like uh, the the hydrogen uh, tanks, if you weigh the energy, it's like sixty two kilograms. And if you want, uh, if if we wanted the same energy, same power in lithium batteries, we would have to put. 14 tons of batteries on board. 14 wow. tons? 14, one four. Of lithium of would, would lithium equal batteries. this 60 kilos yes. that uh, is in the cells. That's really the, 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 the aim of uh, the goal of this project, is, yeah. is to show that hydrogen is very light and much more interesting for, for energy storage. Beautiful. So we can go inside if you want. You can have a look. Uh, it's, it's quite comfortable. It's, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, here we have the, the engineers of the ship, Roland and uh, his son. Uh, Hello. Enchanté. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Ernesto and uh, the journalist is not here. Uh, maybe uh, the marina. And here you have the brain of the system. Uh, so here we have our main screen with our solar panel production. So, so you can go six or seven knots for the canal tomorrow? Yes, we can. Yeah. We can. With, uh, we hope that uh, we will uh, have a lot of sun. Yeah. And if we don't have a lot of sun, we can uh, take uh, hydrogen. Yeah. Okay. Great. And uh, at maximum speed, only with uh, motors, we, we are able to, to go to between 10 and uh, 11 knots, maybe. When the sun is shining, the power from the panels will drive the boat, so tomorrow's canal crossing will be via solar power. But when it's cloudy, power will come from the hydrogen via the fuel cells. That was really fun with the Energy Observer. I was very impressed to see that boat. There's so many interesting ideas on that, I thought it would be best to kind of break it down a little bit and talk about potentials and what they're really doing there. To start with, the Energy Observer is traveling around the world demonstrating the use and the possibilities of hydrogen fuel. Really, they're doing quite a lot of things. They're using the boat as a platform to research the different energy methods that ships and boating can be using. And hydrogen is part of that. And for them, sort of central, as they've got an interest with Toyota, who use energy in their fuel cell methods in their cars, and are looking to promote that in other ways around the world too. So. This time we're going to look at hydrogen as a fuel, but also talk about fuel systems and power systems and how it can all work on boats and perhaps offer an interesting future view of what could happen with fuel and maybe hydrogen in sailboats. Whenever we look at a boat's propulsion system, we're often looking at the range that you've got under power. We're going to have to go all the way across the ocean or all the way across to an island or something like that. So you're talking about how much power you can put into uh, the propeller uh, to move the boat through the water, or in the case of sailboats, we've also got sails as well. But uh, the Energy Observer is really looking at uh, demonstrating hydrogen 
and what they're using the hydrogen for is to burn it through a fuel cell so it generates electricity to drive the electric motors. The difficulty is when traveling long distances they don't have enough extra power on sunny days to create hydrogen and also motor forward. The sails help them somewhat and slowing down to four or five knots also helps extend the range. So I guess we look at why we don't just use electrical power and increase the battery storage to increase the range of a boat. And the key to understanding this with the hydrogen is how much density you could basically put in a tank for a certain given weight. So as an example, on this boat we've got about 600 liters of fuel and a range of something over a thousand miles if we slow down. Probably just 400 miles if we're going really fast, but if we slow the boat down we can bring it up over a, a thousand nautical miles with what we carry in the tank. The energy that is stored in hydrogen gas is incredible. It's a very energy dense material, but it's super light. So a total of 64 kilos, which is what they carry on the energy observer, would probably power a boat like ours for many hundreds of miles. And it's only 64 kilos. Now, of course, you have to add a fair bit of uh, weight in the carbon fiber wound tanks but still you're talking something that's in the general ballpark similar to what we do carrying diesel fuel. The problem is if you tried to do that all with battery power, you're gonna end up with many times as much batteries. Yeah, they've got about 100 kilowatts of lithium battery on the energy observer, and that weighs about mu as much as our car. If they wanted to add enough instead to replace all the hydrogen they're carrying on the boat, that would be replaced with about 10 cars. So you can see that the amount of battery they'd need to, to carry, if it was all done in batteries, would be about 10 times, nearly 10 times as much as what they're actually carrying in the hydrogen. So with these hydrogen tanks, they're basically storing the energy in the hydrogen and then pulling it out of the tank, running it through the fuel cell, and then that battery goes into the electric batteries and is used by the electric motors. Hopefully in the future, being able to store power for our boat in a hydrogen tank might be a way forward to carbon-free navigating just the way we're used to, where we show up at a fuel station and fill up with hydrogen instead of filling up with uh, diesel fuel. And then you don't have any carbon involved. Hopefully, if the hydrogen has been generated by wind farms or perhaps solar panel fields that aren't doing anything else, they could be busy manufacturing hydrogen out of water. So the energy observer takes that one step further and has got such an advanced system where they're actually making their own hydrogen. So with a boat like that, they're gonna be able to uh, come into an anchorage, sit for a few days, the sun hits their solar panels, and they can manufacture uh, hydrogen out of the water and pump it into their tanks. And then after a few days, they could go sailing. I mean, the first thought is, if you just put a whole lot of solar panels on top of a boat, can you just motor around the world? And basically, it seems like the answer is no, because they have shown a ginormously wide boat with every square inch covered in solar panels, and they've got 35 kilowatts of solar power. But 35 kilowatts is also roughly what their engines would need to do to manage around six knots with the boat that big. So. That means they could go about six knots just taking power on a sunny day at full sun. So if, as soon as it gets dark, they'll have to have stored up extra to be able to take them through the nighttime or through rainy days, or if there's a little cloud or it's getting late in the day. So they basically would have to have a lot more solar panels or wind generation or something else to generate enough power to run this boat all the way around the world. So the way they do it is by using the hydrogen to extend the range of the boat into the times when it gets to be nighttime or it's a rainy day. And then they use hydrogen, but then they're still gonna run out of the hydrogen just the way we would run out of diesel. And the difference is they can just sit in an anchorage and slowly top the hydrogen up again while they sit at anchor. The Energy Observer Group have partnered with CMACGM, which we see uh, wandering around the oceans of the world. And I think they're looking at a different sort of system where they would probably carry hydrogen in big tanks on the ships 
and that hydrogen would go into fuel cells to run their electric motors and they would motor electrically around the world just burning hydrogen power and then when they got into ports they'd come into a port and the port would have had big wind farms and big solar fields of solar panels and those that power would have created the hydrogen and stored it in a tank ready for this ship to arrive and the ship would arrive and take hydrogen uh, straight out of their tanks and fill up just like coming to a fuel station. Besides the Energy Observer, another interesting boat that has been looking into the possibility of totally self-sufficient sailing around the world was Jimmy Cornell and he was working on a project called Elcano. They would not have any carbon-based fuel they would use solar panels and wind generation and then regeneration also of power by sailing. So when the boat was sailing, it would be spinning propellers to generate power. And uh, then because they could sail mostly, they'd be able to go at a reasonable speed, uh, get around the world fairly quickly and generate enough power storing in the batteries that they wouldn't need to have any fuel tanks. So that's an interesting idea. They tried that and had some difficulty with it. So. I think they're back right now rethinking it and planning to try again. Perhaps they'll have more luck with it. There is a lot of power that we use that we kind of don't think about, such as in the galley, the stove, perhaps heating water to have showers and desalinating water to drink. So if we're trying to run all of that off electrical power, but I think there is a closer chance of getting a sailboat to do that because so much of the power that we would need would be done by just sailing efficiently around. And doesn't need to motor you don't need to motor very far like the energy observer does i read that there was a mega yacht coming along that was going to be using that hydrogen system uh, although they wouldn't try to cover in solar panels they would do the method of trying to carry enough hydrogen to operate as a fuel could work for super yachts as well and work for the power boats such as the energy observer and maybe there's some place in sailboats too obviously with the sailboat we have a different sort of view of things. We expect to get most of our propulsion comes from the wind and we want to carry enough fuel that we can motor uh, when we need to in flat comms. Uh, we're doing that with diesel at the moment, but hopefully in the future, maybe there's a solution where we can store hydrogen in tanks and be able to motor using that. What do you think? Is there an electric or even a hydrogen powered boat in your future? Throw a comment below. So fair winds everybody, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Distant Shores.